I'm so delighted to get to spend some time with you today and we have some really, really, honestly, I think it's probably, this could be possibly one of the best programs we have ever done. I'm so excited, but I know you're watching and you have needs in your own life. You have needs that relate to your health. I know all of us, we have family stuff that gets a little tricky for us. Sometimes we have job stuff, financial stuff. We know, I know you've got needs. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We'd love to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer. And mom, I'm so excited. We have yes. one of our favorite people in the whole world, yes, Deborah yes. Puget with us. Thank you for having me. Yay. Yay. Love, you. Love you guys. Okay, now this is what I'm really pumped about. Like okay. I'm really pumped because you have a new book out, Forgive, Let Go, and Live. All right, this is kind of a fat pitch because there's not a person watching, including me, that hasn't had a few little challenges with forgiveness, <laughs> right? That's right. So walk us, what happened? Why did you write this book? I wrote this book because first of all, for myself, I, I was tired of being stuck in unforgiveness and I just decided that I'm, I'm not gonna walk in that. I had a, a legacy of unforgiveness. My, both my parents were people who just never forgot an offense. But I know that if I wanted to be forgiven, that I had to forgive people. So that's why I wrote it. But those, everybody who has been offended, and wouldn't that just be like everybody watching, rarely is a subject uh, relative to everybody that, uh, who's watching. But everybody has been offended. And so we gotta learn how do we deal with that and, and, and not get stuck in the offense. Right. How do we deal with that and, and learn from it and move on? So that's what the book is about. And you know, offense, it's, I think sometimes we think offense is just kind of that really big stuff. But the truth of it is, offense goes through the whole spectrum. It goes through the person who was driving and cut you off, or they didn't f put on their turn signal, uh -huh. or somebody said something rude on the on the subway, and you're like, that was stupid, or they didn't pay attention, they did this, or I mean, you get this whole kind of shallow. Yes. And if we're not careful, even those little tiny things tweak us out. Oh, absolutely. And so it has a different degrees, you know, fr from the person who may have shot your brother. <laughs> You know, right. it can go that far. Right. And people need help from it. Because here's the deal, it's gonna affect us negatively. And we always feel like an offense has to be uh, addressed. Uh, even somebody cuts in front of you, what do you do? You honk your horn, because that's the only way you can get back. Or tailgate. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I'm on their yeah, tailgate, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, you gotta do something, because in our heads, when we've been offended, somebody needs to pay for that. Justice needs to be served. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to serve We're going to serve it. We're going to be the ones. <laughs> Pay him back. I want to tell all of you out there, this is a good time for you to call in and just leave a special prayer request, maybe on some area where you want someone to forgive you <laughs> or you want to forgive someone. Don't go into a lot of detail, but please call our prayer center. We really know that prayer can bring a transformation. It's really good. And, and forgiveness, is it comes out of the relationship. Right. With the Lord, because yeah. he always wants us to forgive. Yeah. And I want to say that, and we'll probably say that a lot. It's God who works in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. So there are many people today, maybe you're not even at that place where you want to forgive, but if you're there and you're saying, I want to, but I just can't, I just can't get to that next level. Well, I say rejoice if you want to forgive, because God is already at work. You're halfway there. If he has given you the will, He's going to give you the power to do it. And I so I like to start there with people that have a will to forgive. Hey, that's great. God's working. And you show this in the book. Absolutely. Oh, so I forgive. encourage people. You can forgive. You can't say, I just can't. Or, or I'd like to. Hey, you'd like to? That's great. Step one. Step so, one. <laughs> let go. Let that's go. That's part of it. Yes. And live. then receive. Yes. And live. live. Yeah. And you need to get the book. You say, oh, it doesn't apply to me. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> I know this applies to me. I know it applies to everyone out there. And you need it, and it would be a blessing. Please call in and get it. You know, I have a question, because not everybody watching wants to forgive. They haven't even made, quote, unquote, that first step. And they're, they're stuck in some retaliation mm -hmm. and revenge. You talk some stories in the book about that. Start the story out with retaliation and revenge. Yeah. Because you got to know the whole story. Right. Yeah. So what do, what do you say to somebody who doesn't even want to forgive? I say ask God to give you the want to. <laughs> because here's, the, here's my question. Right. You don't want to forgive? Do you want to be forgiven? Because that's the criteria. If you want to be forgiven, you're going to have to forgive. I want to say that again. If you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive because that's the criteria. I mean, we love the Bible. Let me, I just, I'm probably not going to refer to my actual scriptures because I have most of them in my head. But I want to read this from Mark 11, 24, because we love Mark 11, 24. Whatever yeah. you pray, yeah. believe it. Speak oh, to but, the mountain. Yeah, speak yeah. to the mountain. Whatever you desire, when you pray, believe you have it and you'll receive it. And then Mark 11:25, 25, ah, it says, and 
Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. So while you're standing in all this tall faith that whatever you say, you speak to the mountain, he says, and <laughs> if you have something against anybody, then you got to forgive them because that's just going to short circuit your prayer. Why sabotage your prayers <clears throat> with unforgiveness? Right. And it's linked too. linked. It's and linked to God <laughs> forgiving you. <laughs> that's right. If you don't forgive, right. God does not forgive you. I don't think people believe that. If you did, you'd be forgiven like really fast, like really right. liberal and yeah. lavish yeah. with that yeah. forgiveness because yeah. you're like, woo, I need yeah. a boatload of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not a feeling. We just got to understand what it is. And I want to define that right now, what forgiveness is. Releasing the desire to avenge a wrong. Hmm. I'm just going to release the desire to retaliate. I'm going to release that desire to make it right. I'm going to release that desire for me to get the justice myself. I'm going to release that desire. That doesn't mean I won't pursue justice in a court of law if, if it's that kind of an offense. Right, right. But I'm going to release the desire to retaliate. Because retaliate means to return the punishment. So we got to get that. Return the punishment. God said, that's my job. You don't return the punishment. That's God's job. Vengeance is mine. I have to remember that because I like to help God out sometimes. Yeah, I think he needs help. <laughs> and maybe you're on that very page. You say, ugh, I really want to get some vengeance in here. Maybe they could trip and fall or something, fall into a pit. I could <laughs> dig a little hole for them. No, no. I want you to call in for prayer. Folks, these are real emotions. These are real situations, but we've got to have a miracle out of them, not be devastated by them. So please call us for prayer. And when you call, obviously hop and get the, get the book, hop on the phone, get the book, get a couple of them because there's not a person in our lives that doesn't need to deal with forgiveness. Oh yes, my father died several years ago and um, he had an, uh, a, a, an, an issue, an offense with his pastor and he just wouldn't forgive him. He just wouldn't forgive him. I say now, and my dad was a deacon, he understood the Bible. I said, dad, now you realize that if you don't forgive him, you're not going to go to heaven. And he said, well, I, no, I don't, I'm, that's not gonna, I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. That's just meddling. If I ask him now to, to, uh, to be reconciled, that's just meddling. I don't know where his logic came from. That's just meddling. That is not meddling. You need to make that straight. Well, when I knew that he was, he was in his final days, I flew to Texas. I stayed there 30 days. And he and his pastor were reconciled, and they died one week apart. Oh my <laughs> they died goodness. one week apart. Ooh. Yes. But my mother, oh. my mother also was the type who would hold on to an offense. So both of these people loved God, were generous to their churches wow. and loved people, would help people. People came to our door all the time for help. But with all of that, that's not enough. That's not enough. You got to forgive. So my mom, I say that it was her unforgiveness that ushered her into dementia. She would have imaginary conversations about the women that my father had been, you know, unfaithful with. And she would just sit there and talk to them. In her, you know, in her mind. And I thought, listen, you need to let that go. So we got to learn how to let it go. And people say, forgive and forget. Okay, you can't forget. Let's just get that straight. It's not possible. You can't obliterate anything from your memory. You can't press delete, but you can <laughs> choose how you remember. Mm -hmm. You choose how you remember. Do you so talk about that? I do, that? because we've had some erroneous teaching about forgiving. Let's, let's make up, you know, let's forgive. No, you don't have to be reconciled. And we can talk about that later, because I really want to go into that. Good. But you can't forget, you know, only God has the ability to obliterate something from memory. He throws it into a sea of forgetfulness. We don't have that power, but we can choose how we remember because we can know that all things work together for good. I right. always say that. That's, that's the theme of my life. So no matter what happened, God saw it mm -hmm. before it happened, while it was happening. He could have stopped it. He chose not to. I say he wanted us to, our spiritual growth was more important than our comfort for that time. I believe that. I do too. I really like that. And I think this, if you're watching, I believe that there's something going to happen in your life that is miraculous on this program. Because a lot of you are saying, I can't forgive. But you can act in faith. You can act in faith. Forgiveness really starts with having faith in God. I choose to forgive because I want to be forgiven. That, that is so important. I want you to call and let us pray with you, not counsel you, because today could be the biggest miracle of your whole life. That forgiveness could bring healing spirit, soul, and body. Why are you watching this program? Because God has a purpose for you. Now we'll be right back, so stay right there, because this is your miracle day. 
Have you ever held a grudge? Why is forgiveness so hard? People who refuse to forgive often sabotage their future and create an emotional cancer that spreads into every aspect of their lives. For your gift today of $30 or more, we will send you a revolutionary book that helps you learn to forgive. Forgive, Let Go, and Live by Deborah Pagay is a must-read guide providing specific steps to help you better understand what forgiveness is and what it's not, how it's possible to forgive without forgetting, why learning how to forgive is a process, and much more. We will also send you Sarah's Start Forgiving and Start Living booklet, which will teach you how to revolutionize your whole life through becoming a proficient forgiver. And we'll also send you Marilyn and Sarah's two-CD teaching, Let It Go, that will lead you to freedom from rejection, depression, stress, and much more. It is possible to overcome seemingly unforgivable hurts. Get this valuable resource. Call or click and start forgiving today. thought of all the ways you could get even with that person who hurt you? Well, yeah, I forgive them, but this is what I want to happen to them. And this would be good. Or even Proverbs said, if you laugh when your enemy falls into a pit, that is not a good scene. And I think I've thought of things like that. I think you have to, you know, well, this is what I'm going to do, or this is what I hope God does, you know. And so retaliation is a big thing. It goes through your mind, goes through your mind, and I'm going to tell you, it poisons you. If you feel like you have poison in your heart because of this, I want you to call in for prayer. You don't have to tell the details, please, but get prayer for it because you're going to hear teaching today from Deborah about retaliation, and it's right where you live, and I know where you live. I live in the same place, but I need help in that area, and so do you. So, Deborah, tell us about this in your book, Forgive, Let Go, and Live. Marilyn, we all live in that same place. You know why? Because it's natural to want to retaliate. <laughs> it's, just, it's just natural. It's not spiritual, but it's natural. We yeah. want to return the punishment. And whenever I'm tempted to want to take God's job like that, I do go back and read Genesis 50 and 19. And I read word for word what Joseph said to his brothers who said, we're sorry, we know you're going to get us back. And he says, fear not, for am I in the place of God. I want to make sure I don't take God's place. I know many of you have probably taken God's place. I, I like to help him out sometimes. You know why I, like, I feel like I need to help God out sometimes? Oh, yeah. Because he's so merciful, he may forgive the person, and then they don't suffer any punishment. Exactly. And I'm thinking, I better, I better do something. Help him. <laughs> I better you help him out with this. this. You need help to pay him. for this. You need to pay for some kind of a way. <laughs> but I want to be a channel of mercy. So I read and somebody had something on Facebook recently and they said, the mercy, God's mercies are new every morning from Lamentations. Oh, yeah. I thought, you know what? I know that scripture, but it just, because I had decided not to forgive somebody. I had decided, I, didn't, I hadn't decided not to forgive them. I had decided I was not going to connect with that person anymore because they were just too unsophisticated, too whatever. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there. Too loud. <laughs> too, I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't want that person in my space anymore. And when I read that, the God's mercies are new every day. And I thought, you know what? You're not being a channel of mercy. You have been a reservoir of mercy. You get all of God's mercy that he extends to you and you keep it for yourself. You don't extend it to other people. How are you going to be a channel of mercy if you're just getting the mercy from God and not sharing it? And I thought, okay. <laughs> I love that. And that's old mercy as <laughs> yeah. opposed to new mercy every day. Yeah. And I think sometimes our mercy can get a little stale. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's because we don't go back musty. for a fresh su supply. That's why people need to call in for prayer. If you know you're the type who doesn't have, you're not long suffering, which means to suffer long, <laughs> then we're going to have to start praying that God would give us uh, more mercy so that we can be a channel. And how do we do that? We just do it. You see, we don't have to wait until we feel something. That's what's so important about forgiveness. You don't have to re uh, wait until you don't feel the hurt. Forgiveness mm -hmm. is a decision that you make, and you make it immediately. Now, the trust has to come later, but you make it immediate. You don't even have to tell the person right away that I forgave you, but you decide that I forgive. Because sometimes if you communicate that forgiveness too fast, the person is not good. The person would just take complete advantage. They'll say, oh, I can, hey, I can do that. Mm -hmm. She'll, she's forgiving. So sometimes uh, you need to wait a minute, but you need to never wait for the decision to forgive. That's really powerful because I think a lot of times people feel, I know myself, sometimes I wait for those feelings. Oh, yeah. Right? And yeah. then I'm like, well, I don't feel like forgiving. You know, you don't know how much they hurt me. Yes. Uh, and, that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're watching right now. I know this is, these are hot little buttons that we're pushing <laughs> for all of us, hot legitimately. Spots. But I had the best mentor in this area. Her mm. name was Juanita Smith, the late Dr. Juanita Smith. She's in heaven now, but I tell you something. She was the most forgiving person on the planet. And she had this little phrase that she would just say, I release everybody. Oh, I have made that one of the themes of my life. I release everybody. I say it. I don't have to feel it. I say it as an act of faith, and faith comes by hearing. So when I hear myself say, I release that offense, I feel good just saying that. And, and, and how do I make sure it stays gone? I don't rehearse it. See, that's the thing. I love that word, rehearse, rehearing. I keep rehearing. I don't need to make myself keep rehearing that. I don't need to keep telling you and telling her what somebody did to me because really that's a form of retaliation because what I'm really trying to do is diminish that person in your sight as well. In your sight, yeah. Yes. And it, when you rehearse it, and you may not tell it verbally to somebody else, yes. but you roll it around in your head, oh, yes. right? And yes. you're like, re replay and do this, call, and then you check your phone for the text messages. Well, they said this and this yeah, and yeah, this. Yeah. You go back and then, you know, all this foolishness. Yeah. You need to hop on the phone, grab a couple of these books, forgive, let go, and live, because the truth of it is, every single one of us, you mm. and me, we need this in a desperate way. And it's not enough, I love this about Deborah. it's not enough just to hear, yeah, you're supposed to forgive. Okay, I know, check the box. But what I love about you is you're not just, yeah, beat you into the ground, do this, do this, do this, but you tell us how. How to do it. How? And I'd like to show you the consequences of not doing so. So I opened the book with a story about a, a man who terrorized our city uh, for, for days, killing cops and whatever, because he had been denied a promotion and he cried racism. Um, I, and he had some legitimate reasons for it, but that was no reason to um, to not forgive and then to wow. go on that kind of a rampage. But you see, we're all, we're all subject to doing something like that. You can't say what you'll never do, but if you don't decide that all things work together for your good because you love God. So no matter what somebody has done, I just say know and believe that it's gonna work together for your good. You're gonna learn something about yourself. You're gonna learn how to overcome some things because each victory will help you some other to win. You know that song, yield not to temptation, mm -hmm. but each victory will help right. you some other to win. So I see a problem as something that's gonna strengthen me for, for the next level because we're gonna always be facing something. Somebody's gonna always offend us, but each victory will help you. Every time I decide that I'm gonna treat a person who offends me like an enemy, what does that mean? Treat them like an enemy. How are we supposed to treat our enemies? Love them, pray for them, do good. Bless them. So bless them. So if I say, God, bless my enemies. And you know, and I, and listen, we'll talk about that maybe a little bit later, but I try to humanize them. Uh, let's see what's going on in their lives. You know, and you got to want to do this as an act of your will in obedience to God's wooing to forgive. Because after all, he's working in me both to will and to do. The want to and the power to do it. Totally. And there's a reward for forgiving. So I'm just going to share a personal experience. When I first started to travel, I had not even spoken in a pulpit in our church, and I'm invited as a guest to a charismatic conference on the East Coast. Oh my goodness, you can't imagine. I'm so excited. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm doing everything. I really want to do well. And this person had heard me on the radio. So at the end of the teaching, he received an offering for the radio. So I'm very excited. We really need the money. I come home and well, he said to me, we'll send you the offering. We don't have time to make out a check now. Oh, that's fine. So they didn't send it. So our, uh, one of our people called them and they said, oh, oh, sorry, we'll get it in the mail. Well, it didn't come, didn't come. So we said, well, maybe it was lost in the mail. So they called him. They said, oh, we don't know what happened. We'll send it. Well, they never sent it. 
So I just thought, how could they do oh. that? That's a lie. And I kept that and kind of rehearsed it, <laughs> nursed it. And the Lord said to me one day, if you would forgive them and just give it as a gift. You never receive it, but it doesn't make any difference. It's a gift to them. He said, then I could bless you. Now I had a very small ministry then. I believe that was a seed that brought the blessings that today I get to feed over 2 billion people every weekday. My goodness, oh the my blessing goodness. and forgiveness. You know, those financial offenses can take you for a loop. Now, I had a really small one that took me for a loop. I'm almost embarrassed to tell it. But a guy called me one day and wanted to order, order a book. It was only $20. But he said, I don't have a credit card, but I'm ordering it for somebody else who has all these issues going on in her life. I don't even want her to know I sent it. And he told me all the issues going on, really personal stuff. And I said, okay, I'll send it. Just send me the check. He never sent the check. I called him and called him. We're talking $20 here, right? And I wouldn't take the invoice out of my pending bills file. I just, on my pending invoices, I kept that thing in there for three years. And I'd go through there who owes me. And I thought, one day the Lord says, you know what, this is stifling your creativity. You should just toss that thing, shred it, and go on. <laughs> well, I've, you know, I sold over one million copies of one book, the book he wanted me to send the woman. I'm thinking, why are you stuck on this wow. $20? Why are you stuck on this $20? <laughs> wow. Oh, oh. I know, I was so mad. So mad until I wanted to t call the woman and tell her he sent it, and this is what he told me about you. I, I just, I thought of ways oh. I could get back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can go there. I can go there. Wow. And I finally just let it go. I just let it go. And I felt so much better. It was stifling my creativity. I couldn't even move on. I'm like, oh, gosh, I just, it's just not right. He could pay me this money. It's just not right. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. And, but yet, that's what we do. Yeah. It's not just you. It's not me as well. I mean, I have my own list of things. And, yeah. and so I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. This book, Forgive, Let Go, and Live, hugely helpful, hugely helpful. And also talks about, and I want to just kind of finish with this a little bit, benefits of forgiveness. Oh, yes. Walk uh, us through some well, of that. Uh. Listen, forgiveness is good for you. It's good for you spiritually because you get to get forgiven yourself. <laughs> So it's good for us in five ways, spiritually, and that stool I talked about being um, physically, relationally, emotionally, and financially. Well, it's good for you physically. Most of the diseases, I understand, are uh, psychosomatic in their origin, meaning that your mind, and they said a lot of people don't forgive, and that's the reason that um, there's a lot of people in mental institutions, they just don't forgive. They get stuck in that offense, and they just won't go forward. And, you, you know, there are probably people on medication today who don't need to be. If they would just say, you know what, I release that. You know, migraine, mm -hmm. headaches, all that stuff, rooted in unforgiveness. Well, then emotionally, you know, it's nothing like getting rid of that ball and chain. Mm. It's for you. The forgiveness is for sure, you. Sure. You know, they say, listen, it's, it's deciding to let a prisoner free and then realizing that you were the prisoner. And so I say, I'm going to do it for myself. And so that's why I'll say I release everybody. I just release everybody. Financially, we talked about that. Emotionally, relationally, forgiveness is good for you. Spiritually, physically, the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. It's good for you. We all need it. We really all need it. I think everybody should call in right now for prayer, too. Sure. Because I think we're hitting your hot spot, a tender place maybe, and you just need prayer. And don't go into a lot of detail. Just say, I need prayer. Because you don't need to be in retaliation because you don't want the overflow. So call us with your prayer requests. And of course, this is a wonderful time to call and get the book, Forgive, Let Go, and Live. Because this keeps you in the principles. This isn't just well, I got blessed on that program. But this is something in your hand that will keep you blessed. And of course, you can order it for others. You may know people who are having horrible problems. Get several books and get it to them. And remember, Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Have you ever held a grudge? Why is forgiveness so hard? People who refuse to forgive often sabotage their future and create an emotional cancer that spreads into every aspect of their lives. For your gift today of $30 or more, we will send you a revolutionary book that helps you learn to forgive. Forgive, Let Go, and Live by Deborah Pagay is a must-read guide providing specific steps to help you better understand what forgiveness is and what it's not, how it's possible to forgive without forgetting, why learning how to forgive is a process. 
and much more. We will also send you Sarah's Start Forgiving and Start Living booklet, which will teach you how to revolutionize your whole life through becoming a proficient forgiver. And we'll also send you Marilyn and Sarah's two CD teaching, Let It Go, that will lead you to freedom from rejection, depression, stress, and much more. It is possible to overcome seemingly unforgivable hurts. Get this valuable resource. Call or click and start forgiving today. so happy to have the opportunity to get to minister on forgiveness and have Deborah Pagay with us to minister on forgiveness because everybody needs it. Everybody needs it. <laughs> Desperately. I mean, we need it from all the way as our kids, with our parents, with our siblings, with our friends, spouses. with spouses, <laughs> yeah, your mates, your co-workers, yeah. people from school, your teachers. I mean, the list is unending, right? Yes. Right. So I want to ask you, would you please pray for our audience? Pray yes. for me in this prayer as well that God would help us to live in forgiveness, forgive, let go, and live. Yes, and before I pray, I just want to say that God, we just really appreciate the fact that God works in us to will and to do of His good pleasure. Mm -hmm. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you, God, that you give us the power, the desire to forgive, to release others. And so Father, right now we say we release every person who has ever offended us. We will be a channel of your mercy as we pray for them and bless them and do good towards them. We know God that when we do this, we're doing it your way and we'll get your results. And so we thank you, Father. We thank you, God, and we say by faith that we are free. We're no longer bound and stuck in unforgiveness, but we walk in freedom and we model it. And we thank you that it all comes from you. And so, Father, today we just say again, we release everybody in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we do. We release everyone. You know, and it's such a free feeling, you know, that you're you, re you let it go. Okay. Yeah, they hurt you. They wounded you. Who knows what all they did, but you let it go. And what did happen when you let it go? You let God come into it and you let him make it work for good in your life. And it just releases you. You are released in Jesus name. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We are so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So, of course, you got to hit the subscribe button because we want to continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience. And when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.